Miracy. I'm Susie Carter, and you're listening to Making It. I run a business training and development company called SC Consulting, and we help entrepreneurs increase their productivity and profitability. And my passion is helping entrepreneurs live a life that they love. I come from a very large family. There's nine of us. Bobby, Ronnie, Stevie, Terry, Joni, Shelley, Susie, Kelly, Debbie. <laughs> and what my dad did instill in us where I got the entrepreneur spirit, he said, Sue, you can have whatever you want. Just go earn it. Go get a job. Go make it happen. So I started my entrepreneurial journey at 10 years old, washing windows, doing yard work, doing anything that I could do to earn some money so that I could buy whatever it is that I want. Being in a big family, my dad was in the military, so there was no allowance. I didn't even know such a thing existed. And I've always been the entrepreneur, the hustler, you know, building my first like real business, which was window cleaning. (laughs) I made little business cards out of paper and went around to the neighborhood to just earn money so that I could have things that I wanted, like a bicycle, then I wanted a moped, then I wanted a car. I didn't know anyone. I didn't even know what entrepreneur meant until I was in my 20s and I took a class. I was think I was 22 and I took an entrepreneurial class, a business class, and they gave me this word entrepreneurship. I'm like, what does that even mean? So I didn't really look at myself as a little business owner. I was just looking to how do I have the things that I want? Because my parents weren't able to give that to me, which at a young age was a curse, but it's been such a blessing because I know that if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Nobody's giving you anything. If you don't pick up the phone, if you don't go out and network, if you don't go hustle, right, nothing falls in your lap. You create your own destiny. By the time I was 18, I started reading self-help books. I got into an MLM, which is a multi-level marketing. And that's where I really learned sales and learned to fall in love with sales, tangible sales and intangible sales, and fall in love with business and understanding this world of entrepreneurship. So I've had $10 million companies and seven multi-million dollar companies. My first business was a salon and spa. I just knew I didn't like managing people. I wanted to teach people how to work strategically behind the chair. Paul Mitchell found me and said, oh my God, what are you doing? And how do you make so much money? And they said, can you teach our salon and spa owners? I'm like, sure. I didn't know how to do that. Right. But I'm like, let me just teach you my best practices that I do to build a business. And when I wanted to learn about building a business, right, I needed marketing strategy. I would go to the bookstore and this is how broke I was. (laughs) I would go to the bookstore and find the book that I wanted. So if I wanted a marketing book, then that book was, you know, $20. Well, as a young, I was a single mom raising two little girls and I didn't have extra money to spend $20 on a book. So I would write the book title down, then I would go to the used bookstore and go buy it for 50 cents or a quarter. And so again, learning how to be frugal, but getting the information that you needed to build a business. It wasn't always easy, but it was definitely at your fingertips if you were willing to do the work. That business, we grew to a million dollars. We sold that company and started the training and development company because Paul Mitchell found us. And we built the largest training and development company that 15 years later, Ritker's Publishing bought that company. And so I always look at that as a huge conglomerate like Ritker's Publishing. That company did $40 billion with a B that bought my little training and development company that I started as a single mom with two little kids at my dinner table going, I want to make a difference in the world. And then I started teaching. I I wanted to raise money to build this project, which was called Your Beauty Network. And in 2000, there was no WordPress. There was no Infusionsoft. So we built it from scratch. It became one of the premier resources in that industry. And I think back of, I didn't even know what I was doing. I had to learn how to raise money. Um, We used other people's money. We raised a million dollars for that business to build the infrastructure of that business, which was incredibly rewarding. So that company, again, we built it to uh, $1.4 million and made a profound impact in the beauty industry. And the place that I learned how to raise money at was called a CEO space. And they taught you how to structure your private placement memorandum, 
talked about all the laws and the legality of raising money from other people, money, and how do you do investor meetings? And I realized that there was such a missing in that community. I said, we're teaching people how to raise money, but we're not teaching them how to build a business. So then they're failing. And the founder of the company said, great, why don't you teach that? I'm like, I don't know anything about entrepreneurship. I just know about the beauty industry. He's like, Susie, you're amazing. Just teach. And at first, I'm I'm not going to lie, I was nervous and scared and intimidated by lawyers and doctors and all these people who I gave more credibility to than I gave myself. People would say, oh my gosh, you are my coach. I, I want you to, hi- I want to hire you. I want to play with you. And so after a year, I kept turning business away because I, I was too scared. And I think that lesson of being afraid and doing it anyways is something that we as entrepreneurs have to face every day. I think each season I'm in another reinvention of what do I want to do next? How do I want to play next? How do I support my community? What's a bigger game for me? So I don't know as an entrepreneur if you ever feel like you've made it because there's always another mountain to climb. There's always another challenge, right? Am I comfortable? Absolutely. My businesses have allowed me to travel all over the world, have everything that I've wanted. And now I'm looking at what's next in this season. What's the next journey I want to do? What's the next difference I want to make? How will I impact the world? I believe that my gift from God is my life. My gift back to God is what do I do with my life? Making it means to me, if you go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right, the foundation of Maslow's hierarchy of needs was survival, food, shelter, clothing. And then once you're done with survival, which can take years, right? Some people never get out of survival. I see that with students now. And then you get into security. So when you're in security, it's like, okay, I can breathe. I'm not in survival. And then the next level is belonging. You want a community, you want a tribe, you want to make a difference. And so until you get into that level of belonging, you can start to feel some of the pressure back off. And in that belonging, the the next level is self-actualization of truly making a profound difference. And a profound difference, not only for me and my students and in my bank account, but for my family and for my friends. So making it to me isn't about material things. Making it isn't about collecting more things. Making it to me is, am I making an impact in the world? Am I walking my talk? Am I being a good mom, a good Gigi, a good wife? Am I creating holistic success, not just work success? Um, And I think to me, that's making it is where there's a balance of play and fun and your business is play and fun. It's not just this grind that we all do for eight to 12 hours a day. Like there's too much stress when I watch entrepreneurs to go, wait, 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 there's a better way. We can have a life that's unrecognizable. When you put your plan in place, when you systematize it, it can truly be the freedom that you've been looking for your whole life. And to me, that's making it. My main message is wealth is your birthright. It's not for some of us. It's for all of us. I'm a living, breathing example that I didn't have the pedigree. I didn't have the relationships. I didn't have the education. I made that. I made the relationships. I got the education. I stuck to it and created the tenacity. We're so creative at it as individuals. And that's what I love about entrepreneurship. It's so creative. And we can create our wealth. As an entrepreneur, nobody's telling me how much money I can make and how much money I can't make. It's all up to me and doing the things I need to do to make that happen. I think the one thing that I'd like to share, if you're stuck, if you don't know, go find someone that has been there. Do your due diligence, right? Because there's a lot of charlatans in our industry, but go find an expert because you're either going to waste time learning it by yourself, right? Googling it versus finding an expert like yourself to go, I need to figure out how to do this. Get some coaching. A great coach will tell you what you don't want to hear. A great coach will show you what you don't want to see so that you could be the person you knew that you could be. I'm Susie Carter and you've been listening to Making It and you can find me at Susie Carter, C-A-R-D as in dinero, dollar, E-R, dot com or on all social platforms. Again, Susie Carter.
Making It is part of the Mira CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Once Upon a Business. This episode of Making It was produced by Danny Bermont and Jeff Govertson. Cynthia Lamb is supervising producer. Danny Eney, that's me, is executive producer. Post-production by Post Office Sound. To catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, please give us a follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.